All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the Dynamo Tips and Tricks webinar with Solutions Specialist Ray Tang. Just a couple of things to note uh, while we're on this webinar, everyone is going to be in listen mode for the duration. So if you have any questions, just feel free to put them into the questions window. They're on the GoToWebinar app. And if there's time at the end, Ray will be answering them then. Uh, the webinar will also be available on our website within 24 hours. Uh, now, before I let Ray start, I'm just going to give you all a quick background about Microdesk and our team. So if you're not familiar with Microdesk, we're an AECO consulting firm. We've been around since 1994. Uh, we now have 12 locations spread across the United States and one location in London in the UK. Our team consists of over 180 technical specialists, like my coworker Ray, and all of our specialists have background in the industry. So with that being said, we're able to offer a lot of different services and help our clients with a lot of different things, whether it's building information modeling or BIM, uh, workflow assessments and enterprise strategy for long-term growth, and technology management, mentoring and support. Then we also have our own application development team where we can work on that for our clients and create custom applications. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it over to Ray and he can tell you a little bit about himself and then he'll get this webinar started. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Ray Tang and I joined the Microdesk uh, a little bit more than a year ago and uh, uh, I, I graduated from Columbia University in February the uh, 2015 and I have a master's uh, degree in construction management uh, from the civil engineering um, school. So after graduation I worked as a cost estimator for a year and a half and then that's where I realized that the uh, uh, general con con uh, contractor's world has too much of manual and tedious and repetitive works. And that's also where I started uh, trying to do some automations to boost productivity and accuracy of the work. And I also learned, uh, uh, started to learn some programming like in Python and Java and C Sharp from the online courses. Uh, and then I uh, found the opportunity to join Microdesk and finally start to working with uh, BIM technology. So, yeah, today's uh, webinar, the topic will be around Dynamo. Um, most of it will be around uh, the uh, Revit environment. So, uh, welcome. Welcome everybody to today's webinar, and we have a lot to cover today, so let's just uh, jump to the content. So this is today's agenda. So the first thing that we're going to go over is an overview of what Dynamo is, what Dynamo really is, and uh, what it's capable of doing. Um, the second is that it's basically going to be a, a showcase of what me and my team and uh, uh, some other uh, people out there are doing uh, with Dynamo, what they have achieved in the Dynamo uh, environment. And then I'm going to go over some uh, scripting tips in the Dynamo environment. Uh, that includes the backward planning, uh, which is very helpful for me uh, in many situations. And uh, I really want to stress on using Python in the uh, Dynamo environment because a lot of my work is heavily relied on uh, the Python nodes inside of uh, Dynamo. And uh, as I will be demonstrating in today's webinar as well, so I would really encourage everybody to pick up Python as you are using Dynamo. Um, then next, we're going to go over some technical details about uh, the, the Python nodes uh, specifically. And uh, we're going to go above and beyond and explore uh, the connection among uh, Dynamo, Python, and also the Revit APIs. And there is also another add-in that's called uh, the Revit Python shell that's going to be very helpful. So. I hope that this webinar will be very helpful for the, uh, the Dynamo users or 
uh, the API users uh, or the uh, Revit add-in developers. Uh, mm, or if you're uh, a person who's uh, a believer or practitioner in automation, in construction industry, or the general AEC industries. Uh, or if you're a person who wants to speed up your workflow, then this um, uh, webinar will be able to hopefully open up the more imagination for you to, uh, to, to implement Dynamo in your workflow. Um, and I would like to point out that my background is from a uh, construction man management point of view. So I work with, uh, a lot with general contractors and owners uh, and less with designers. So this webinar will focus more on the uh, construction, uh, the general contractors uh, side. So I hope uh, that everybody can take away from this uh, webinar about what to do and what not to do in, in Dynamo and uh, yeah uh, and see new possibilities of automation and then go above and beyond and make your workflow more smooth. So what I will not cover in this uh, webinar is how to uh, write a, a Dynamo script or how to use Python nodes in the Dynamo environment and uh, basically all those information that you can get from the uh, uh, Dynamo Primer website. Mm. But what I will be sharing is some uh, practical uh, usages of the Dynamo scripts with Python. So, and I'll also be sharing some of the uh, resources like the uh, code the templates I'm using uh, in my daily work. So let's get started on the uh, Dynamo overview. So what I think Dynamo is, is a tool that helps other people make tools. So mm, the, uh, a, a, a lot of people are using Dynamo to do parametric design, like the uh, architecture designers and MEP and structural designers as well. But from a general contractor's view, uh, we use it do a lot of workflow automation, like you extract information from an Excel sheet and uh, then you populate some model uh, elements inside of the uh, project and then you uh, kind of write those information into another uh, Excel form. But so why would people use Dynamo in the first place, right? Um, so in, in my uh, academic uh, mm, learning. So there are only two things that matters the most to the uh, construction uh, people or the AEC industry in a whole. That is the budget and the project schedule. Is your project under budget? Are you saving money? Or is your project uh, under schedule? Are you saving time? So Dynamo is definitely a big helper uh, for you to save money and save time because it's basically automating a lot of things for you. Um, so how does Dynamo achieve it? So the direct effects that Dynamo have on your workflow is that it can improve the efficiencies for you and uh, improve a lot of accuracy for your manual work. And uh, because everything is set up in a script, so human error is largely reduced or even you can say eliminated as long as you set up your script correct then you know you're on the go and another thing is that it re, uh, reduces the communication loss by that I mean if you have a work routine set up and if you're trying to translate I mean transfer this workflow to another person, if you tell him or her to click this, click that, and do this, and do that, calculate calculate that, um, then there's going to be some misunderstandings in, in, inside of this uh, process. So if you condense everything, if you solidify everything inside of a Dynamo script, then you can you know send out this Dynamo file uh, to another person. So every single detail of your workflow is preserved. So that's also the reason why I like Dynamo uh, to do the uh, automation. 
Uh, let's also look at the uh, four M's that, that are the four uh, most in, uh, fundamental elements for the construction cost efficiency. That's money, manpower, material, and machine. And dynamo, in my view, it can uh, directly uh, impact uh, two of the four most important facts that are manpower and money. Um, so what specific tasks does Dynamo actually handle? We can do parameter read and write. We can populate the uh, model elements. We can put tags on them. Uh, we can do like elevation tags or coordination tags as well. And uh, we can also incorporate some math calculations and you just use Dynamo kind of as a um, sophisticated calculator and you can uh, transform some uh, real-world coordinates into Revit internal XYZs, uh, which I will be demonstrating a lot in the next chapter. And uh, Excel importing and exporting, that's of course what uh, Dynamo kind of is known for. Um, information mapping and the batch processing. So for example, if you have 100, 200 of elements and each of them are supposed to renamed according to a certain pattern. Nobody really want to do that like manually. Uh, so just to toss it to Dynamo and have it do the work for you. Um, the streamlined manual workflow um, is more like a dynamic kind of a interactive process that I'll be showing you later. Uh, and uh, we can also do something for the BIM management, uh, BIM managers as well, like the family nesting analysis. So there's a sentence uh, that goes, where there's a will, there's a way. So this is what I believe that Dynamo is, uh, you know, fits this sentence. Uh, if you want to do something with Dynamo, if you want to figure out how to do it, you can. Um, so yeah, coming next is the, uh, showcases basically for what we have done in the Dynamo environment. So the first example that we have here is, it's a request from uh, one of our uh, BIM strategic implementation manager. Um, he wanted me to uh, give him a script in Dynamo that breaks down uh, all the families that's in a project file and all the other families that's nested inside of each one of those families. And also, all the families that's further nested like, uh, along the line. So this is <laughs> quite a challenge for me at that time. And uh, um, it's very unusual kind of a script for, uh, for a Dynamo um, user to write. Um, what it can do is that it can help you locate a target family, say uh, if another person hands you over the uh, project and tell you, that, hey, I have such and such family inside of this project, but I don't know where it is, and you can use that when you find it, then you can probably use this type of a script to locate, so which RFA, uh, RFA file uh, it, this family is located in. And it can help you also uh, build up an inventory of all the families that's inside of the, the project. And you can use that information to um, plan the next step of what other families that are missing that you need to build uh, in order for you to carry out the whole project. And also you can use this to troubleshoot like how um, which ones are the families that has the, the most levels of nesting. So uh, according to some of my architect designer uh, co-workers, uh, if a family has more than three or four levels of nesting, it's easier to cause some corruptions inside of the, the model. So yeah, that's also how the script can help with, the, uh, with their work. Um, so the next example is um, is what happens when I first joined Microdesk. And this is my first kind of on-site job. Um, so this is a train yard coordination project in Long Island City, New York. 
everything on this job is communicated by our northing and easting and, and elevation coordinate uh, coordinates instead of Revit internal XYZs. So one of the first things that I was asked to do by the client was to throw in the uh, astral models. So those models include the manholes, the uh, light poles, and the switch machines. This is the train yard, so we have to put all the things inside. Um, so any experienced uh, uh, Dynamo user would know to Google online and find a random script that just uh, imports the uh, information from an Excel sheet, and then uh, retrieve the family uh, types and just uh, put it uh, generated according to the points in, into the model. And I wish my, my job was so simple as well, but <laughs> it turns out not, because they gave me a spreadsheet full of the northing and easting and elevation. And any existing um, uh, animal scripts, as far as I knew at that time, didn't uh, do this. So I have to translate this uh, real world coordinates to the Revit XYZ, uh, and then uh, kind of reuse this script to put the elements in. And what makes the, uh, the matter more complicated is that even if, if it's the same project, we have different uh, RVT files that are set up differently. They might have different, uh, um, you know, um, the project base points. They might have different rotations. And there are many files that I have to go in and to build the Revit models. So I figured that there must be a, a mathematical relationship between those two uh, coordinate systems. The one is the real world coordinates. It's using the N, W, and elevation. And another is the Revit internal project coordinates. So I figured, um, if I figure out the math of uh, how to translate the coordinates and into the Revit XYZs, I can figure out basically a total type script that I can use like this. So what this script actually does is that it, it it's retrieving the project base point information and it can give me the east and west, north and south, and, uh, and elevation, and also the rotation. And I can use the math that I just figured out and do the translation. So the next, is, the next step that I did was I kind of transformed this uh, problem, uh, this prototype uh, script, into two separate Python nodes. I condensed everything into just uh, you know one single uh, Python node that does everything for me. What they do, for example, the the, the second one is that it's taking the uh, inputting three numbers, treat them as a uh, Revit internal X Y Z, and then output a coordinate just like this. And the first one is doing the opposite. Uh, it's treating them as a real-world coordinate, and then it's outputting the XYZs. So next up is I somehow implemented those uh, nodes and make them able to process a list of such real-world coordinates that's uh, imported from an Excel sheet that's given by the general contractor. Then I literally just transform this family instance by points, by Revit points, into a family instance by coordinates. And I'm using those information that's already there, so I don't have to do any manual uh, calculation or even you know, type up any formula in Excel anymore. So with those um, notes done, let's envision a little bit of what we can do about those nodes, where we can use them. So we can probably uh, use some dynamo geometry nodes uh, that's out, out of the box to create some landmarks instead of really creating um, model elements 
inside of the project, we can just generate a sphere or a cube to denote an important uh, kind of a coordinates uh, for your project. Then we can do a search view, which I name it that way because uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, generating a new 3D view with a crop box that's aligned, uh, I mean, that's located exactly around the uh, given coordinate. And we can also do a perspective 3D view generation that, uh, you know, you can feed it of two uh, real world coordinates and have them looking from one of the point to another point. And it's going to be very accurate. And uh, you don't have to do too much manual work to do that. Um, another is that you can use those uh, coordinates translate them into the XYZs and do the adaptive components popping out. Um, and you can calculate the co real world coordinates by given the XYZ offsets uh, as well. So it's a, it's a very powerful uh, calculation tool um, that I made for that project. So not only can those, um, know, those two nodes help me with populating the elements, but it can also help me with uh, relocating them. Uh, let me show you the examples of me doing the uh, relocating the model elements and also the DWG files. Uh, let me pull out my Revit. So let's take a look at this um, manhole. So for example, this, this manhole is not supposed to be uh, at this point Maybe it's supposed to be at another point, just like that. So what we really need to do is, I'll just uh, open this Dynamo script. And you see, you can input the original coordinates, which is the So that's the original coordination, uh, coordinates. So where do we want uh, this thing to actually pop out at? So let's just uh, use this here. And then we hit run. What, what it's going to do is that first, it's going to interpret it, uh, those coordinates into uh, the Revit internal XYZs, and then it's doing a little calculation. Finally, it's doing the, the moving thing. And this moving node is also realized by using Python. So if I run this command, you'll see that this manhole is gone, relocated to yeah, here. So when you look at the uh, coordinates, it's matching exactly as what I have. So it's moving this thing precisely from one uh, original coordinate to another destination coordinate. So that's how it's doing its work. Um, and the next scenario is what happens a lot, not only on that project that I was on, but also uh, in some other projects as well, which is um, when you sometimes link in the um, DWGs, it's just not in the same uh, in in the right location. Some, sometimes it's you know, offset it a little bit, but it just takes a lot for you to kind of move back. So what we can do with uh, this situation is is that we kind of um, identify the same. Uh, the point from which it's supposed to move from and the, the real accurate um, um, coordinate that it actually belongs to. So when we put a coordination tag on it, that's the original and the destination, I just want this thing to match up to that. So um, after I finished inputting the original coordinates and the destination coordinates, I hit run. 
and run it. So it's dragged back according to how you want to, uh, um, uh, according to how you set up your origin and the destination coordinates. So that's uh, this implementation of relocating the DWG and the model elements. So next is about uh, what, I, what I talked in, into the introduc introduction um, slides about um, the um, automating some of the very tedious work in a, kind of a interactive um, context. So I have this task of laying the pipe according to the DWG file that I'm linking inside of the uh, Revit file. So in order to do that, um, without a Dynamo script, you would need at least 15 steps. Anybody who's familiar with creating a pipe inside of Revit, you will know that you have to go to System tab and go to Pipe and then select the level, set the offset, and then click the start point, end point, and do a bunch of calculations. And at the end of the day, you still have to you know, align the top elevations of the, the pipe to the, given, uh, uh, to the given information that I can show you here. So what we're supposed to do was that we're building this pipe uh, at this location while using those two numbers as the top elevations of the pipe. So if we want to do it very quickly, it's going to be system and pipe. You click this point, you click that point. All right, so you also need to read out the uh, not only just the diameter, but also the outside diameter here as well. And then you are going to click this uh, starting node and to put uh, the number here, like 308.51 and the minus a half time of the outside diameter, like this. This is only for this one node, uh, for, for this one endpoint. And you have to do the same thing to the other node, uh, to the other endpoint. And what if you have, like every week you have, every week you have like over 30 or 40 segments to do. So you basically have to run a, a, a lot of repetitive works. But with a simple Dynamo script, what you can do is, is that you'll be able to run everything within just six steps. So how we do it, we load up the um, Dynamo script. We choose a baseline pipe as the, uh, the pipe that we're copying from. And then we select the detail line as I previously set up. And then I input the for uh, the left elevation, which is 308.51, which I've already done. And then the elevation one, the endpoint elevation is 308.61. And I choose whether I want it to align to the top or not. If I do, select two, and then I run it. So the pipe is automatically copied from this place to that, to, to align to the um, detail line. And if we, use a elevation tag to check for the elevations, it's always going to be matching. So this is how powerful um, uh, Dynamo can be on this uh, single pass. Um, so what I would also like to show you um, so what happens on that uh, work site, uh, job site is that the uh, surveyors are taking, uh, are, are taking a total station and shoot the points in, in, on the field. And it, they're generating a EWG file with all the points and the lines inside of it. And uh, they are sometimes generating 
uh, pulling information out of the DWG file into an Excel sheet uh, containing the endpoints of the pipe. So I was thinking if I can use uh, those extracted points, then I can also build another script that's taking the, um, the coordinates from the Excel file and then just to build the things uh, on the fly without me having to even, you know, uh, zoom in and out from the, the lines in the DWG file. So let me show you. This is what I have done on, on that task. So it's going to read from an Excel file, um, give it a sheet name, and then run the script. You'll see that a run of pipe is automatically lined up here according to the coordinates that it's given. So this is um, some of the uh, tasks that we have used on that um, job to, to automate. And we also touched a little bit on the cost estimation side of it, which is that we're uh, applying a timestamp on the pipe or the dock banks that we're building um, on the job site. We're applying the timestamp on both the design model and the uh, as-built model. And then later, we retrieve the timestamp information to identify which month they belong to. And we filter out the pipes or the duct banks from the same month. Then we compare the uh, actual uh, footage with the design footage. And then we have kind of the, um, the percentage of material that's actually put in on the same on the same run of pipe and docks so that the general uh, the general contractor knows that this month whether they are saving uh, some materials or are they um, kind of, mm, are overrunning their materials so the next uh, topic that I would like to touch a little bit upon which I think is important is uh, some scripting tips. Uh, I think because today's time is very limited, so I just uh, touch a little bit uh, upon those topics. Um, the first thing I would like to stress is the backward planning uh, scripting mindset. Uh, thanks to the uh, American author Simon Sinek, he brought up the uh, idea of golden circle, which is that uh, when approaching to a problem, you always ask yourself three questions. What you're doing, and how you're doing it, and why you're doing it. So the same question goes with Dynamo. Uh, what we do, we are going to make some Dynamo scripts work. And how do we do it? We basically put a bunch of Dynamo nodes together and try to make it work. But why do we do it? What's the purpose of writing the Dynamo script? That's the most important uh, in, uh, question. So we always want to keep our uh, outcome, the end goals, uh, in mind. So the good practice is always that we start with why. We start with the, uh, the, the, the final notes that we uh, have in mind and uh, just uh, you know, work backwards. When I first started uh, to construct the Dynamo scripts, I find myself uh, working from the outside to the inside. Uh, what nodes do we have and how do I put them together and uh, I don't really have a why in mind but when I get more experienced with uh, Dynamo I just find myself working from the inside out like why am I making the script am I trying to export some information into an Excel sheet or am I trying to automate something or am I trying to get a geometry uh, uh, out of the script so if I have this goal in mind, if I have this little project in mind, then the next step is that I figure out how I might be able to do it. So then 
I go into the search bar of Dynamo and just uh, look for the proper uh, Dynamo nodes that can possibly be, be helpful for me. So taking this uh, family instance by point example, that is very common to use to populate the model elements. Um, so we have our Y here, our um, final nodes, our end goal is that we want to use points to place the family instance. So this node brings us two questions. The first one is, what family type are we going to use? So we go in, into the search bar and search for a node that will give us a family type, and we find this one. This one is the family type by family name and type name, and it requires two, uh, two names. Family. One is the family name, the other is the type name, and they're supposed to be strings. And then in order to give that string, we either use a string node or a code block. Um, so we figure this first question out, and then we go ahead and figure the second one out, which is which point are we going to use? So maybe we're uh, using a Excel sheet to import the data. So we find out, okay, we're going to use a Excel.read from file node. And then what file is it and which sheet, uh, sheet name it is. So we just uh, uh, go ahead and find the proper nodes for those two uh, input informations. And sometimes in reality we have to uh, combine backward planning together with the forward planning. So that's mm, where we go from the uh, imported data. We might want to process it. Maybe we want to uh, translate them from the uh, real world coordinates to XYZs, and then finally generate the points, then load it into the uh, family instance, instance by point. So So let's just take advantage of, of the final <laughs> uh, couple of minutes and talk about why we're using the Python nodes in the uh, um, in the Dynamo uh, environment. First of all, the Python node in, inside of Dynamo is very um, powerful in in the way that it handles the lists. So, for example, if you uh, if you are trying to sort a list um, retrieving some uh, information from the, the element of the list and then generate, uh, generate another list. By using Python, you can uh, retrieve the name of the element uh, in, in the list. And uh, if the element, uh, you know, has this a uh, certain filter, and you can you can use some logic um, logical uh, operation here, and then you can also sort it. All of those um, things that will take up a lot of spaces in a Dynamo graph, uh, you can you can use as simple as just one or two lines of code in, in Python to help you do it. Um, and the second uh, reason I would uh, um, like to use Python a lot is that it can make a lot of direct API calls and uh, you can in theory you can make your Dynamo script as powerful as the um, the Revit add-ins that you, you see um, some other people are, are, are building or using in their uh, Revit ribbons. Um, not only is it powerful, but it's also simpler to, to, to write, and it's more straightforward than a .NET environment or are you, whether you're using C Sharp or other uh, programming languages. It, it's just more simple and straightforward, and it helps you need up the, the graph, and uh, you can export the Python script and share it as a text file or a PY file to, uh, to other people. 
Uh, and it does have disadvantages. Is that it's definitely less fun to read, and it takes more time for you to learn if you're already uh, taking your time learning Dynamo. Uh, in order to use Python, you'd have to uh, take time to, to learn Python as well. Um, and another thing is that you cannot really debug the Python nodes step by step. Mm. Some things to keep in mind about uh, what not to do in, in Dynamo or in Python environment is that uh, if you require a UI, if you want a uh, kind of a box, a dialog, um, a dialog to pop out in your screen, you probably uh, will have to veer into the world of .NET or C Sharp uh, to do it, uh, to build a, a button uh, inside of Revit. Um, also, if you have like too much of the uh, geometric calculations, you probably have to stick with either Dynamo out of the box nodes or the, um, the C sharp uh, add-ins. And if you uh, also, if you're um, trying to make a lot of edits to your Revit files, you probably should do it in C sharp as well in the API, pure in API environment. And if you are opening not only just one document, document meaning a Revit file, either it's a Revit file or a RFA family file, if you are trying to open and edit many of those documents at the same time, you probably should uh, uh, go with the API add-ins instead of a Python node in Dynamo. So next I'm just going to share uh, the screen with you. Um, I would actually encourage uh, the audience to take a screenshot of this uh, page if you're interested in doing intensive Python programming in a uh, Dynamo environment. Because uh, this is what I have personally been using that uh, that helps me uh, make direct API calls in inside of uh, Dynamo. Um, so what this uh, script here, uh, what you see is that from, from this block, it's by those lines, it's importing the Revit API that makes you uh, accessible to those uh, methods inside of API. And I also included the uh, typical API entry points for you to use. So the DOC, meaning the document, if anybody is familiar with the, uh, the API world, will know that document stands for a um, um, Revit or family file uh, that you can basically access every single uh, information that's, uh, that's sitting inside of uh, the, the file. And uh, I'm also using this unwrapped element that comes with uh, some of the uh, imported references uh, in this context to translate the, the objects from a, uh, from a Dynamo uh, format into a Python format so that you can go ahead and use the, the input nodes in a pure uh, Python um, environment. And uh, so this block is a demonstration of how you are supposed to edit, make the edits to the Revit files. You open up the transaction just like this, and then you uh, make the edits to the file, and then you close the transaction. And uh, also you can assign the results into the out uh, node, just like uh, what you can do in a, uh, in a in a regular Python node. So, um, because of the timing matters, I'll just uh, um, touch very slightly on the next topic, which is the Revit Python shell that I would like to recommend for anybody who's interested in learning the uh, Revit API and also Python, because 
um, Ruby Python shell is like a command window that uh, that allows you to basically use Revit as if you are using AutoCAD and uh, you know uh, similar softwares. That it's it's a command window that uh, when you type in the exactly the same um, methods from the API, you can watch your Revit uh, file like being edited and making changes on the fly. So this link is where you can get the Revit Python shell. Um, and uh, you can reuse the uh, Python, uh, you can use the, you can reuse the Python script that you have probably written for your Dynamo uh, script. And then you can also put it into a button here in, inside of your uh, Revit uh, window. So yeah, because of the timing today, I might not be able to show you um, how Revit Python shell can help you speed up your modeling process, but it's still a good resource to, to keep in mind that if you want to get into the world of API, you can go here and grab this add-in. Uh, also, when I'm talking about the, the Revit API, some people might be wondering where can I get it. So there is a website, the Revit API docs online, that you can go onto it and um, search for the appropriate class or the other objects that you have in mind that might help you with your scripting work. Um, you can also get it, uh, get a local version from the Revit Developer Center. So this is the final uh, page of today's uh, webinar. So it's a sum up of what we have uh, covered today. So we talked about what Dynamo is, what uh, Dynamo is capable of doing, why people are using Dynamo in today's uh, AEC industries. And um, I also made some you know, showcases of what our team has been doing for some of our projects. And uh, we talked a little bit about the backward planning and uh, talked a little bit of uh, the Python and uh, uh, we also provided you with a page of a very powerful uh, Python kind of a template. Uh, hopefully, everybody can make good use of that uh, that, <laughs> that uh, Python file as well. So uh, we also introduced a little bit about the API, where to get it, and then the Revit Python shell, which is a command window for uh, everybody, hopefully, to use. And um, to sum everything up, I would like to still say again with the sentence, where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, what Dynamo can actually do is, I would say, only limited to how you think can help you carry out. All right, that sums up uh, today's uh, webinar. So if anybody has any questions, you can. Ah, I see a uh, question from uh, John. That uh, The question is, did you develop a way to automate your pipe creation script that didn't involve creating detail lines? as import a spreadsheet and use that as the input to create all the pipes as at once. So I I think in the uh, in the demonstration I showed a, a script that just to import the uh, the Excel file and uh, just to you know populate the pipe segments instead of you having to create the detail lines first. So, and also another question from Daniel. Uh, 
Have you made any programs involved in optimizing design, such as finding the shortest wire path, wire path, or optimal placement of devices? Uh, the short answer is no. I haven't touched that on that part yet, but with the capabilities of the Python nodes inside of Dynamo, it's just a matter of building an algorithm, a core algorithm of um, of determining what uh, aspects of optimize, uh, optimization that you want to do on your design, like how you would like to find the shortest while path, and uh, like uh, how to determine the optimal placement of devices. So once the core uh, algorithm is determined, you can go ahead and just to wrap up the um, mm, the, 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 the other uh, methods that's actually placing the uh, elements. So those, I think, would be simpler to do than developing the core algorithm. So unfortunately, my, my answer is no, but is it doable? Totally doable. So I think, um, thank you very, very much, everybody, for attending this uh, webinar today. And we do have got a bunch of other uh, questions that we will try to um, reach out to you and providing the answer uh, to the best of our capabilities. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, have a great afternoon.